This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. As a businesswoman, people are always asking me for business advice. What I tell them is that these days, one of the best things you can do for your company is establish an online presence. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that can help you run your business with everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and even analytics. I love the fact that Squarespace offers tools for appointment scheduling. No more waiting around for a response because Squarespace's appointment scheduling feature takes care of everything. So I can get back to running my big, huge, fat company, having a wonderful family, and trying to have it all. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com bald to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Good money habits start with your very first paycheck. And if you just scored your first job, you've got an opportunity to jumpstart a healthy financial journey. When you sign up for Chime and link a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and fee-free overdraft up to $200. And with Chime, there's no monthly fees, no minimum balance, no deposit required to become a member. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes. It doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash bald. That's Chime.com slash bald. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank, NA or Stride Bank, NA members, FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash spot me. Well, hey, let's, you know, hey, hi there, honey. You want to do like a pod? You want to do some pod talking? Out. Yeah. Stretching out my Invader Zim shirt I got on here. Oh, is that, um, uh, uh, uh what's his name? Uh, George Glass? No, I know the guy. It's something, um. Invite a theme. Um, I, I know the guy who, the, 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 the author of that. It's a cartoon. Yeah. It's a oh, comic book. Graphic, graphic. No, it's an on TV cartoon. Oh, it's on TV. Is it also a graphic novel? I think I'm so. sorry, I didn't know that. I think so. I think oh. So. Is J, J something, V something, Z something? Yeah, Joe Vasquez. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to tour Nickelodeon and I met him. He's really nice. Cool. Yeah. I did, Um, I was at Nickelodeon when I did, uh, I had a character on Monster High this season. Oh, that is, so, talk about it. Oh, well, I played Skelly Bonderbone. It, it aired like two weeks ago. I didn't watch it because I don't have cable. Right. Um, but I saw clips of it on Twitter. But I, this sounds bad. I didn't want to promote it because of all the people calling drag queens groomers and pedophiles. And it's a it's a it's a cartoon, and so I didn't want to draw unnecessary attention. Right. So I didn't post about it because I was scared. Well, I didn't want you people shouldn't to be, be like, scared, and you should. But I don't want people to be like, like at Nickelodeon, g- disappointed. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I've become such a troll on Twitter recently. Really? Every time it's some conservative shit. Yeah. I loved I, when it's drag related, like CMT posted a picture of a bunch of drag queens on the red carpet. And of course all the comments are like grooming. This isn't my country. And if I have to roll in there and go too much woke <laughs> grooming, all capital letters. Woke Tina McGroomingstein. Yeah. It's so great. And this lady, this lady, Barbara was like, they need to leave our kids alone. And I'm like, I don't think it's good parenting to leave kids alone. Thank you. You know, leave them in a hot car, leave them in a hot car, in a hot car, the grooming. I people can't get enough of the me. grooming. People have been texting me from high school and college and stuff being like, are you okay? I just keep seeing all this shit about drag queens on the yeah. news. Are you like, I'm like, I'm not in danger. No, I am in Guantanamo right now, but I'm not in danger. Yeah. But people keep, th- I'm like, people also don't realize the privilege of money and fame. We're not going to be affected. No. It's people think? down the street who are going to be affected. Right. Pe- people, drag queens and trans people who work in bars are going to be affected. Not us. No, because we're some, we're just dogs that happen to have a little bit of money. Right. I don't think, oh my God, I don't I know just, if we can get into it again, but like, even if you keep dr- drag shows from happening, this shit's on the internet. Drag is on the internet every day, all day. Most of it's on the internet. It's people in their, in their little homes doing with the ring light. Are you going to pivot to Amish Yeah. to keep your kids away from the grooming? That would be more interesting if they just went full anti-electricity. You know what I mean? Go big. Swing big. Have you ever met a person on Rum, Rumspringer? 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 Yeah, Rumspringer is like their little holiday. They're like, go out and sow your royal oats or whatever, or wild oats. Have you ever met a person on Rumspringer? Oh, my mama. What is it? Rumspringer? Rumspringer. Yeah. I don't know why I can't say that. Well, because you've never fucked someone on Rumspringer. Yeah. (laughs) Rumspringer. I think. Jerry Springer. Look it up with you. 
Amish holiday, or it's like the the the. Free they need pass- to do reverse rum springer for non Amish. Visiting you go week. Go be Amish for a week. Yeah, visiting week. Yeah, they should do that with like the scared straight. Yeah, remember like scared straight. Where uh-huh. It's like I tell my mom to give me money, and I you know, and yeah. then that the person, somebody in a Halloween store military <laughs> outfit comes in and Straps screams the, in their face. Totally. It's so puts plastic handcuffs on them. It puts and they're them in the like, back of a Toyota uh, Camry. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry. They made me clean for five minutes. Yeah. Uh. Have you ever had to do community service? No. No. Okay. I had to, not for crime. Not for crime. It was part of being part of the National Honor Society. You know how much I had to do? Five hours a month. And I, cr- I screamed and cried about it. What'd you do? Some bullshit. Like, bo- I was always like making it up. Like, oh, I cleaned in my teacher's room or something shit such a fucking liar so i was in the kind. nhs but i don't remember if they made me do anything five hours a, that five hours a month is a lot for me girl i thought that ceremony was bunk remember they give you the white rose or whatever the yellow rose no that's the bachelor no <laughs> no like it's like high it's very culty the national honor society well yeah of course it's a very You're like lighting candles yeah. and holding flowers mm-hmm. and then you get on the table and that priest fucks you right in your yeah. little virgin cunt and does a little smear of a uh, ash like on your forehead yeah semen Sucking, sucking down semen. Do you love Ash Wednesday? How much do you love Ash Wednesday? That one day of the year where everybody walks around with shit on their face and I've pretend it doesn't matter. Like you've never noticed that on Wednesday before you. I, that's the day with the ashes on the face, right? That's the day where people walk around with the soot on their forehead and a smudge all day but long. They do it in the morning then, or what? Uh, yeah, usually in the morning. I, the people who do it like to have it all day long. They like to do all their errands and see as many people as possible with that smushy, uh, sooty it's little It's like a conversation mess. piece. Like she, he went it's to like, Jared. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I went to church, bitch. Yeah, I'm a fucking Christian. Sorry, I'm fucking chosen. Yeah. Sorry oh, that wait. Jesus, you know, whatever. Chosen is Jews. Christians don't say chosen. Uh, no, Christians say. But doesn't, don't all. Got it from Hot Topic. Work. I just did, I just did an activation with Hot Topic and I had to do like a, a goth look. As a boy. Oh, God. What bringing did you back do? my high school years. I wasn't do? goth, but I was like hot topic. Emo, emo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to do like a little smoky eye with like ju- like rings. And like, I-, I looked in the mirror and I thought, this is for some people. Yeah. It's not for me. It's like Fallout Boy. But it's for boy. some people. It's Fallout Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Pete Wentz. But people, I love goth people. I think he's cute. We had a lot of goth people at like Solid Pink Disco. Mm-hmm. People who are going all black and they had like a pink earring and they're like, this is for you. Where they were like, I had to go buy allow something. It? Will pink. you allow it? Of course. Oh, see, that's great. I would just wear a pink lipstick or something. Yeah, yeah. one thing pink. That's all I have. Or like my whole face, like Amanda Lepore in that commercial. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so rum. What happens on Rum Springer? During Rum Springer, Amish youth enter a time of greater social activity. Traditional youth activities include volleyball, swimming, ice skating, picnics, hiking, and large outdoor parties. I'm sorry, that I sounds decadent. Was, I thought it was crack and sex. I think that's what it really is. I think I thought like you go to New York and you wear normal clothes and you suck cock for heroin. Yeah, you go right to Avenue A and you get on your knees and you take as many loads in your mouth as possible. Right or the Grand Central Station, ass out. They have a little uh, Velcro flap on their the back of their little panties. Do you get into hookups that are ass up, door open, ass up? Absolutely. The yes. fuck I do oh. not. No. Absolutely yes. No, absolutely the fuck I do not. I need. I have a, a very rich, active, imaginative inner world. Mm-hmm. I don't need just some like like mountain. I I need to know the. I need to know I'm getting involved with a person. I want to know about hot them. To you. Yeah, or, or not even a person that's interesting, a person that's real, has a has a life of their own. And we're merging for one magical moment, sometimes many moments, mm-hmm. over the course of an evening. Someone you find hot. Someone, that has to be part of it. Yeah, I don't I don't get like, I don't see a butt like sticking up like, like a hole in a, a tablecloth with a butt. It's not safe to say, are you gay? It's safe to say, are you into girls or guys? Well, I, so that's- But you don't know what people are. Funny you say that, so- a friend of mine from college has t- two young um, children. Gorgeous, by the way. So, like, models. Hot. But yeah, like, stunning. And kind of androgynous. Um, you know, she's like a coastal elite, very smart, well-educated. But she was telling me her, her 12-year-old son, he doesn't really think in terms of, like, gay, straight. They don't really, they're not doing all that. They're doing The Sims. They're, <laughs> 
Wait, wait, wait. In The Sims, no one's gay or straight or anything. You can just be attracted to anyone. That's so. Where what are we doing here? Oh, I think that's what we're moving. What towards. are we doing here? What is this gay straight alliance shit? However, you know what though? This is horrible. I'm always like, wow. If you're straight, you just kind of assume everyone around you is like someone you who could be interested in you possibly. Yeah. Whereas when you're gay. Unless you get a read that they're gay, yeah, you don't assume anyone, any guy is going to come into you. Right. But I think it would be harder and more confusing if there was more options for me. Like, <laughs> oh, at I least, see what like, you, you don't catch a vibe? Well, you know what you, you like. You want to catch a vibe. You want to catch but a vibe, if, man. But if, if there, but if everyone was fair game, I think I'd be even more confused about who's vibing and who's not. Well, you got to read the body language. Because I'm like, oh, he's gay? All right. Even if he's not into me, he'll probably fuck me. You know? ass up in a hole in a sheet right yeah you just put the tablecloth over your butt <laughs> one of those paper like disposable birthday tablecloths exactly Happy you, just birthday, cut a little, Sarah. you fold it up cut a little thing put your butt right through it you say hello well have you ever been a proctologist they wrap that paper around you they put you up on that table that i've never been to a specialty doctor that only deals with the asshole they put you up on the table like this uh -huh. and then they the table tips like they hit a button and you go <laughs> so then you're like inverted Amazing. and you're wearing paper wrapped around yourself like a dress why when they by the way they wait every you notice that doctors everyone preps you until the last second when a doctor has to be there so the doctor oh. watson puts on a glove and immediately boom no they have like a little scissors or whatever where they rip a hole through the paper <laughs> so they need this exposed butthole oh my god like in the pornos when they rip the underpants off yeah do people want that I, I certainly do. I watch. You want it. panties ripped off? I want yeah, panties ripped in half. Do you like men in panties? I do. You do? Yeah, I do. I was like, I was on the fence about um, I was on the, on the fence about what kind of underwear? Jock straps uh -huh. for for a long time. Of course, I don't particularly think. I think you have to have some kind of um, some kind of substantial heft back in the back to get pull off a jock strap, right? A skeleton <sighs> in the jock strap is not exactly that enticing. That's just my point of view. I don't. I mean, I mean, this is maybe my trauma. Ugh. I don't think jock straps are the most flattering thing to wear. No, I don't either. I also, but I have, you know what I do have come around on? Well, I've, I was always around on them. Thongs. I think they're so hot. Do you, you think? Yeah. They're fucking G-strings. You like that? Yeah, like the, the classic ones. Not the ones with all the straps and shit. Like a, like a stripper's G-string. You know, yeah. gold, gold lame or black or whatever. I want to see more go go boys in real underwear. I know well, that's now fucking what's real weird. underwear? Like 100% cotton. Hain gray Hanes. Gray Hanes with some sweat stains in the crack. Some, because my damage is I now attribute a certain amount of costumey underwear mm. to like to sex workers, like circuit gays. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. Yes, right. You know, yeah. And I like a little more either creativity mm. where it's a costume. Or a little more realism. Yeah, I'd rather have nothing. I just like you can you can do all that, but I, it's all going to come off. And, and if if it all goes my way, pretty quickly. You know what I mean? We're not doing ba 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 ba. It's not Dita Von Tisa New Year's Eve. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're not like doing glove, glove, garter, garter, stocking, stocking. Uh, you know, we're just mm -hmm. taking it all off and getting rolling around. Cock sock. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. As a businesswoman, people are always asking me for business advice. What I tell them is that these days, one of the best things you can do for your company is establish an online presence. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that can help you run your business with everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and even analytics. I love the fact that Squarespace offers tools for appointment scheduling. No more waiting around for a response because Squarespace's appointment scheduling feature takes care of everything. So I can get back to running my big, huge, fat company, having a wonderful family, and trying to have it all. But who can forget about email campaigns? Not me. I used to be intimidated by the idea of sending email campaigns for my business, but not anymore. Because Squarespace's email campaign tool comes with easy-to-use templates and built-in analytics. Also, you might not know this, but... I'm a geek and a nerd, and I love numbers. That's why my favorite part of Squarespace is their analytics features. It's so cool to learn where my site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bald to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hi. Good 
money habits start with your very first paycheck. And if you just scored your first job, you've got an opportunity to jumpstart a healthy financial journey. I don't have my first job because I got let go because my mom, um, my mom told them that I'm only a little girl. <laughs> When you sign up for Chime and link a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and fee-free overdraft up to $200. That's a lot of money, but I don't have a lot of money because I'm just a little girl. And with Chime, there's no monthly fees, no minimum balance, no deposit required to become a member. So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes. It doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash bald. That's Chime.com slash bald. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank, NA or Stride Bank, NA members, FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash spot me. What do you think about sex in movies? Oh my God, this whole this whole Twitter conversation. It's crazy. It is. It's the next level of kink at pride. It it's, is, it's crazy. I love it. I love it so much. I was like, how dare, doesn't move the plot forward. I think it's so unnecessary. It's like, well, who are these pilgrim people? They're on Rumsbrigger. They're on, <laughs> yeah. They're on Rumsbrigger trying to watch the whale. <laughs> <laughs> the whale could have benefited from a love scene or two. Uh, call me crazy. Yeah, I rented you know? the whale. Turns out it was Wally. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was I, using, I was using the Amish pronunciation. <laughs> I just, I love, I, I wish they would bring back a true 90s erotic thriller genre back. We need Sliver. We need dis, um, the Indecent Proposal. We need Disclosure. We need those nasty Sharon Stone vehicles mm -hmm. for like hot. For Sharon. Yeah. A basic Instinct, Fatal Attraction. Yeah. We need Michael Douglas fucking some, you know, hot bitch in what's her late 30s. That? What's with that? It was a genre in the 90s. But what's with Michael Douglas? Because he with is these hot young bitches. Michael Douglas with fucking Sharon Stone in her prime, in her prime, hot, wet, fuckable pussy that uh -huh. every man in the world would trip over. And woman. Every oh yes, and she was bisexual in that as well. Yeah, yeah, hotter than hell, sizzling, scorched. That pussy was. And she's the villain. Was butane. She's the villain. She is the suspect. Oh, all all bisexuals the are the villainous interest, suspects. The person of interest, let's say. Um, but you got you got you know we just don't have that. Also, where's the brunette uh, bombshells these days? Where are they? Where are the Jean Triplehorns? Where are the Marsha Gay Hardens? Where are the Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonios? Where are the Where are the Mimi Rogers? <laughs> where are the Mimi Rogers? Where are the Mini Drivers? Yeah, Mary. Well, but I, I guess people, Andy McDowell. Well, David said that he well. I guess maybe this generation doesn't understand that having sex in a movie isn't real sex. There's not penetration. There's not, this is acting. And it's beautiful. And also these are actors. Yeah. Actors want to act. They read the scripts and they go, I want to do this. Yeah. That's and, what happens. And also just t take a look at some of these, um, these films, a Brian De Palma film, um, or, you know, and then look at uh, men.com. Very different. Very different. Very different. The lighting is, you know, it's a whole beautiful, it's art versus. What is Titanic without that steamy window that. The, uh, <gasps> hello. Yeah. What is Sliver without uh, him, Billy Baldwin creeping up on, uh, you know, alongside her and fucking her on that. Um, I never seen Sliver. Oh, mama. Are you saying Slither? Sliver. Okay. I've seen Slither. Yeah. Sl this is very different. Did you see Slither? Uh, is that the, the, um, snakes, aliens? snakes in the, no, oh no, it, so there's aliens involved oh, okay. in, in invading like a small town. Oh, is that they go up the puss puss? It's fucking crazy, girl. Okay. It's fucking crazy. Let's check it out. Big gore, big really? nasty gore. Yeah. Tipper gore, Al gore. Disgusting. Elizabeth Banks is in it. Oh yes. Okay. I think I've seen that actually. It's crazy. Oh, is that the. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I ate, I couldn't find five milligram gummies, but mm -hmm. David had 10 milligram. Okay. And I thought six to one, half a dozen at the end. Yeah, so I bit half of it off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm like playing my little video games. I watch a paranormal activity. Yeah. Took the, the other half. The other half. Mm -hmm. Turned teen to angular. Child. It was the key change and my heart will go on. Yeah, here. In bed, eating a frozen really? Twix. Like, <laughs> Gooned. Wondering why I need the lipo. 
You know what I? You know what I did the other night? I took um. I had an edible cookie on a whim. These old bag in the in the thing, and they kick in. So I always forget. Every time I do an edible, they I come in I, like a wrecking ball, babe. But they in so much later. I'm so you've much later. Forgotten it. Uh, always, you've forgotten. Always. Always forget. And so two you've hours later, on. while I'm like kind of like cleaning the um, the scum off my like kitchen, uh, my bathroom sink. And I'm thinking about you like couldn't help but wonder. I, I was like, I couldn't help but wonder, what are all the patterns in the relationships of my lives, and how do they have to? And I was like, what am I in? Oh, I had an edible. Yeah, and it's like that's stupid. It's like everything is so uh, considered. The minutia of every activity is called into question. There's like a lot of. It's just too much thinking. Yeah, it's too much thinking. It's it's thoughts. It's a lot of thoughts. It's, it's not for me. But sometimes I have revelations. Yeah, you know? sure. I'll be on TikTok and I'm like. You're not hot, or you're not funny. You're just hot. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh with someone the people. Else. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. I might have laughed at this, but right now, mm-hmm. I know that I would have laughed because they're hot. Yeah, not because they're funny. Sometimes I get depressed though, because it makes me think. It makes me analyze things from a from a dark angle. Mm. It's 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 rarely like a oh, you know you what I mean. You can't let yourself. You need to put close the door to the spiritual realm right. of certain topics yeah. if you're going to do that. Well, that's what I mean. I thought I just need to sit down and watch the whale. Yeah. Or sit down I, and watch Avatar, Wave I Water. Even, I don't even get much into edibles anymore, but because of the time change, I was trying to like... Does it make you go to bed? Well, I was like fully ready to go sleep at 3 p.m. Oh, and then by like nine, right. my body was like... You got to push on through. Morning. And so I had to be like, through. no, we need to just yeah. take the edible and go to sleep, Mary. Yeah. Did you get fucked up by jet lag? Yeah, definitely. You do. Bigly. 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 Oh, wait, wait, wait. I didn't tell you about the horror. No. What? When I got to the airport to go to Australia, the front desk. Mr. Fergus, we've been informed that your seat doesn't recline. But I'm talking. It doesn't even recline as much as a normal seat. American Horror Story Qantas. It did nothing. You were 90 degrees. 90 degrees for 14 hours or whatever the flight is. I mean, I couldn't even do the the one inch amount. Because in a normal coach seat, I can sleep like... Yeah, you can you shift a little. Totally. And you put up little, This is almost it has like these things, the head things. This is almost past vertical. This is almost yes. like almost bending. So I'm watching so, the whale yeah. knowing that this is the closest to sleep I'm gonna get. And I'm like, uh huh. Oh my god. The whole time. And I felt bad because I couldn't complain hard because of course I'm flying with two people who their seat was never gonna turn into a bed. Well, so fuck I can't those sit people. there and act like you know, I can't act like when the- Ellen had to let her staff go during covid the fuck you can and you should and i would have i know i called you for support which i shouldn't have done because you were like go home i was like get on the you, first get I'm on the like, first you Uber get home. yourself you find your dignity in your suitcase and you leave <laughs> the airport and you come back when there is a suitable flight thank you very much steven craddock who owns in the dark yeah. the tour i got on the phone with him i said kachi would have been gone i would just I so would you know. have been gone I wouldn't do that. And they said, we're going to refund the flight. And I called the tour director and I said, I want that money. I want it in my hand in ones I and fives. It. I, right want it. <laughs> yeah. I want it. I want it. Luckily, Crispy it was bills. the way there because honestly, if it had been the way back, it would have been much worse. Well, after a tour, I did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And on Sunday, I had two shows. Sunday, I, would Sydney, have been back. I had to go backstage, rebuild my face from scratch i had to pull out everything and rebuild it basically repaint the whole thing yes that's full copper repipe oh my god and then go to my other gig and it was at a gay bar and it was it was so fun though because it hot as well well i'm used to performing i love to perform for anyone Mm -hmm. but when you get to perform in a gay bar with gay men ignoring you Mm -hmm. there's something very freeing and magical about that yeah when you're a sexless clown just gyrating in the corner Yeah. yeah 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 Versus, you know, girls from the suburbs worshiping yeah. me like Dr. Manhattan. Well, uh oh, right. a little bit crazy. Yes. Yeah. It was like a little reality check to be somewhere where you're being ignored. I was like, oh, oh. I guess I can kind of just do my thing and yeah. I have no pressure really. Totally. Um, I also, I didn't tell you about my other gig. That's how I, I took this off the books because I didn't want to get canceled for being a pedophile. Um, you did a children's camp? <laughs> no, I did. I, I took a little, I went with my friend who lives in Australia mm-hmm. and Mateo and I went and played at the bathhouse in Perth. Now you played at the bathhouse. They, D- they have a DJ booth. Oh, at, would you, would you play? Steamworks Perth. It's raining, man. What'd you do? No, I played the like the good, nasty, dark, where it's okay. just like fat, dark beats with like fat, touch dark my beats. body, mm. blah, blah, blah. like you know that type of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was really fun. It was fun to be in like, a, you know, they gave me a room to keep my DJ backpack in, and it was like a bed. Mm-hmm. With a sex TV, needle. <laughs> with a sex TV playing, yeah. yeah, and I just got to keep my stuff in there. Yeah, and then I like they gave you a little towel, 
Oh, as the like, little face cloth. And it looks like I was like, I don't want to be like photographed in a towel DJing at the bathhouse right now. Right now. What'd you wear? I just wore like normal clothes. I was the only person there with a t shirt on. Okay. Okay. Um it was cuties? really fun. Cuties? Cuties? Oh, hot people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then also not. Of course. It's a bathhouse. Yeah. It's not it's, you get your whole, it's not the, queer as folk. No, it's the troll toll. It's the grocery store. Yeah, it is the grocery store. It's the grocery store. It's the naked grocery store, yeah. It's slither. <laughs> It's liver. <laughs> it's it's slither. So, but it was really really fun, and I've never been to a Steamworks, and it was Steamworks Perth. It was really really fun. I'm I'm dying. I'm really hoping you're gonna say that there was somebody doing a water show like a Mermaid Man. No, in the glass. No, no. But there's a hot tub by the DJ booth. I was like, wow, I could put on a long song. Put on our ultimate ten minute remix hop of MacArthur the, Park. Hop in the pool. Go get in the hot tub for a little yeah, bit. Dunkaroo. Get on a Rio. Whatever. <laughs> you probably can't get an STI from a hot tub. Um, you can probably get a fungal something, but that's probably it. I just got tested. For what? SATs? No, I, I get <laughs> tested every three months. Oh, for every full panel? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing to speak of. Nothing exciting. That's a that's a bummer. But you know that that's the best time to get tested is when you're like, if you get tested regularly, then if you have a scare, you don't have to combobulate and figure out how to get tested. I know. But it was fun because... Uh, it was fun to play like the, between the gay bar and the bathhouse. It was just like, I don't get to DJ besides precinct. I don't get to DJ in real gay bars very yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was like really fun. Do you ever play any Madonna music? Um, Erotica. I play a remix of, um, at night I lock the door so no one else can see. Let the music uh, get into the groove. Get into the groove. I play yeah. a remix of that. Okay. And I play, uh, Vogue sometimes. I use okay. the Vogue acapella over other songs a lot. Gotcha. Gotcha. Dietrich and Dimaggio. I'll like loop that shit and use okay. it. Sure, sure. But okay. there's not enough really good. Hung Up? I never play Hung Up. It's no, because I play Gimme Gimme. Gimme, Gimme yeah. And it's like the same song. Right, right. I played Ding Dong at one of the parties. I know. I saw. It was so cute. It's, it's so, it's so, you know, it's so wonderful that, that people actually know the song. They were thrashing. You know? I only yeah. played it one night and. Because you're embarrassed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. While well, I was playing Rasputin, and it, you know, it's almost the same BPM and same key as Rasputin. Yeah. Well, it's Rus Russian folk influence. Yeah. Yeah. So I mix into it, and um, people just, they love. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. I also got, I got Tomas to give me the stems of the acapellas. Mm -hmm. So I have all the acapellas of that if you ever want to hear your audio only. Oh, I got my stems. Yeah. Oh, I got my stems in a vase at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. like you, Ashley, and yeah. all the voice effects. But yeah. a lot of your performance is spoken. Yeah. So that's a good acapella because you can use it over anything. Yeah. I also buy, but, oh my God, wait, wait. Um, oh, can I see? Uh, speaking of stems, I have the stems for ravioli, which are really great. Oh, yeah. Because it's just a lot, and there's a lot of like um, layered vocals, like kind of like a choir effect. But um, we, we did that. Um, uh, a, a little thing for the Boulet brothers. Uh huh. And it was, I don't know if I can say, give it away. Oh, it was so nasty, girl. Is it, it's going to make me sick. It's going to make you sick. You'll have to look away. It was so crazy. And so I showed up. I We had this idea. I didn't know if it was going to work. It was involved gore, involved pasta, involved blood, and involved little people. And, um, and then so, and it all came together at the last minute. But this, these poor hired actors didn't know that they were going to be shoveling fists fulls of bloody pasta out of my gut all day. For most actors, I think 90% of their job is to wear a button up shirt and like sit in the background of a scene and eat. I think actors yeah. are just happy to do something fun. I mean, she was, there were two of them, um, uh, two actors and the, the, the girl was a absolute trooper. She deserved a purple heart. She really, we put her through the ringer. Did they know who you were? Or they were like, no. what is drag? Who are these people? Uh, they, she knew who, dra she knew about drag. Yeah. She didn't really know about, I think she might've known me, but wasn't impressed. She was on little women, the show. Mm, um, I watched that. Yeah. She was little fierce. women of LA. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I watched that. Yeah. She was fierce and such a trooper. It was so gross. It was so gross. Yeah. I think, I don't think I could do that. I think. The very display of it mm -hmm. would trigger like a, a or, response or an orgasm. Of don't eat that. Well, nobody was going to eat that. But weren't they eating it? Oh no 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 no! I was just putting it in my mouth, through, but not eating it though. We were, we were just scooping it out, singing, "Hey, hey, Mister Scoopy Man, scoop up!" <laughs> I don't like that. Today's bald and the beautiful episode is sponsored by our friends at Better help. 
I have to tell you, it's really easy to get caught up in what everybody needs from you. And you don't really take a moment to think about yourself. I mean, the bigger picture here is like, you got to put the mask on yourself and the crashing plane before you put on other people. And I know as a performer, as a boyfriend, as a brother, as a everything, I really end up getting a little too uh, negligent when it comes to my own care of myself. I've benefited from talking about things in therapy because instead of me unloading on my assistant or snapping on my boyfriend, it's like for me to be able to, in a little womb, talk to a professional, inform my thoughts and feelings around my responses to things or maybe some of my issues with myself, I'm not like a loose cannon ready to just fire on anyone. And it's just, especially living with David, it's given me more boundaries about like, there's the version of this I want to talk to in private with my specialist. And then there's the version of it I talk to with my boyfriend. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. One of my favorite things about BetterHelp too is that it's remote. So if you live in like a small town where you may not be able to find a therapist who is comfortable talking about LGBTQA plus issues, like you could live in bumfuck and talk to a very qualified, queer friendly specialist. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Switching therapists is normal. It does not have to be weird. For more balance, visit betterhelp.com slash bald today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. What do you think about God and religion and love? A lot of things. (laughs) A lot of things. Did you know that Monet Exchange used to date a woman and she said at one point, God, I can't date you. God doesn't like that. <laughs> Monet is a complex tapestry she of is a woman. A, she is the coat of many colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she yeah, has yeah. to hang out with Bob, so she also has yeah. to, needs a purple heart. Do you know that my, <laughs> do you know, oh, do you know that my dumb ass, I know she's bald. She's bald as a bitch. She's a bald bitch. Girl, me, you, Monet, and Bob, and Bob. we could put our heads together yeah, yeah, and it yeah. would look like, would you like cage-free organic I, eggs no, totally. or bleached white grocery yeah. store eggs? Yeah, or gray expired <laughs> eggs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's got this unit on, this long braided unit that her assistant is twisting up and all this kind of stuff. And as I'm leaving, the, I was like, oh, I was like, that's your hair. You thought it was her hair. I thought it was her hair for for like a, a couple of seconds. I get up real close and I'm looking. I was like, "Oh, that's a wig." And I just did. Left. You also think that your wig was your hair? Well, I just left qu- kind of quickly after that because I didn't want to stick around for any more questions. And I just <laughs> I thought I was like, you know, there's sometimes where you like you say something and do something is so it like so just mind blowingly idiotic, so stupid. That you just gotta leave. You gotta get out of there. You gotta forget about it. Yeah, immediately. There for sure. Yeah, it's so humiliating. Oh, you thought it was. You really thought for for good. Bitch, you really thought for three seconds. I was like, oh, oh, because well, I don't. You know. You don't have to explain yourself. Okay, thank there's you. nothing to say there. Okay, um, the Brady Bunch. Banana, something banana. hilarious happened backstage with because you know, I don't drink. No, but she more but than makes up Steven for it. Stephen, yeah. stop drinking. Brandon doesn't really? really drink. Mateo doesn't drink much oh, at that's all. Right. So we're all on tour with Vanity. She's gonna hold up the whole liquor cabinet. <laughs> Fuck. I know. She was like, "You guys make." She was like, "You guys make me out to be more of a drinker than I am." You guys tell stories about me. Oh no, she doesn't and, need um, any help from you guys. One of the nights she came back and she's like, "She Vanity likes to get a little because Vanity loves to perform, but more than that, Vanity as part of her service as a performer, she likes to after she performs walk and take pictures with fans. Yeah, yeah. Get a little drink at the bar. She likes to hang out. With yeah, people. Kiki. Kiki, you know, fantasy, but she walks through and she comes back and those bachelorettes, like there was, I guess, bachelorettes there at my party and they, yeah. Oh, well, a solid pink disco. Yeah. Which is, by the way, it's a better bachelorette experience than, than going. Pen- penis at Dick's yes. Last Resort. Yeah. I met one of the bachelorettes. I said, this is a really fun bachelorette party. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Um, but in one of the cities, Vanities comes back to the dressing room and the alcohols hit her hard and she's like, oh, the bachelorette. They gave me shots and forced me to listen to stories about the divorces. <laughs> she was like, she said, w- w- groups of women were buying her shots and then and forcing and then an emotionally a labor. yelling about their... emotional, pre- forcing her to do emotional labor. Yeah, damn. She's so beautiful. I know she's stunning. It's unreal. She's so. She's such a cunty painter. Cunty. She's doing these Barbie numbers. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. Oh. So she's doing her number, right? And I have a costume uh, that is one-armed, like a one-armed yeah. disco suit. One, mm-hmm. It's like a Bob Mackie. One arm is um, fringe. Okay. And 
I think about having a fringe suit is, and you're standing in front of a giant panel of hundreds of buttons. Oh, that fringe can get stuck on faders, oh, knobs, yes. yes, 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 multiple times. And then what? Okay, Vanity's doing her number. She's doing a Barbie, a totally her Barbie mega mix. She's okay. like doing this is my hair. She's doing hair by you know uh, Gaga, mm. and I go to film her. So I have my iPhone and I'm leaning over the, the decks and I'm filming her and my strand gets stuck on the fader and the volume drops. No way. Immediately. And she looks behind her and I look at Mateo and I look down in panic and my fringe is wrapped around the fader and has cut the music. So I slam the music back on and I'm just smiling and I'm like, oh my God, how mortifying. That's horrible. And after I run backstage and I go, I'm so sorry. I, that costume got stuck on the fader. I said, I guess I shouldn't be wearing anything like sleeves. No. Yeah. Or anything flouncy gets stuck on the fader. Oh, that's and then actually two terrifying. nights later. It happened again. During the same part of the song, I was filming and it happened again. And she was like, again? I said, I'm so fucking sorry. Please I'm tell so me it happened the third time. Please no, tell just me twice. <laughs> thank God. But then another night, I had that big crimped disco wig on. Love that, by the way. And I, and I glued it on to death. Yeah. So I could move in it. Yeah, yeah. And... I, I have my back to the audience and I'm shaking the shit out of it and they're cheering. The hair gets stuck on one of the faders and turns off the music again. So I guess I need to turtlenecks wear and, turtlenecks and pussy cats. and bowl cut wigs. Yeah, turtlenecks and Dorothy Hamill DJ. DJ Dorothy Hamill up there. I was like, this is why Jody Harsh is up here in a t-shirt. Because and and uh, f- uh, fried, um, fried, uh, a fried strip little, of bangs. Because yeah. her bangs are this long. They're not going to get stuck on anything. No, and they're just like little, um, it's like a, uh, yeah, like a paintbrush. So I learned the hard way. Like you have to costume appropriately. That's scary because pulling the it. plug on it, pulling the plug on the music at a party is it, it's it, like kiss of death. people there dancing kiss of death. And yeah. in the middle of her number where they're all clapping, oh, it's during her number. Both times it was during her number. And I felt so fucking bad. You should, you she turned should. around and looked at me and I went, <laughs> and pointed at my so, costume. Yeah. I yeah. was like, I'm so sorry. Fuck. I'm so fucking sorry. Did you get her a bouquet of flowers or some cash? I had her killed. <laughs> okay. I thought she had a good run. Yes, yeah, she did. A lot of crying, a lot of crying, crying. I think people can't hold their alcohol. So a lot of people in all pink outside the venue sobbing. Oh my God. Come on. We got to grow up. 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 A lot of crying. We got to grow up. We're not crying outside the gig. We got to grow up. I feel like the only person who's allowed to cry at a gig is if it's your bachelorette party and you're hammered. Yeah. And even then. Don't do all that. Don't do all that. Mama, don't do all that. What do you think about crying? When's the last time you cry? Uh, Maybe two weeks ago. Watching the whale. No. Well, I cried. Yeah. I cried from yeah. the whale. I'm mean, hung. She makes me cry and everything. Yeah. Uh, love her and Watchmen. Watching she, her again. Mama, she is, she, she's a scene, she's a scene stealer. I she's graduated so from charismatic. MIT three years later. I, I bought, bought it. it. <laughs> um, and you, girl, you got to watch her downsizing. I know. It's on my list. It's on my list. I just don't Mary, fuck with Matt Damon like that. But if you want to cry, watch her and downsizing. She's going to, okay. Watch it. What's the saddest, um, What's the saddest movie you can think of? Something that would make you like... I'm not watching Brokeback ever again. Okay. I'm not watching Titanic ever again. Okay. Uh, anything like that, I can't do that. It ruins my day. Okay. I don't leave buoyed by the human spirit. I leave right. downtrodden by the realities yeah. of the human experience. Right. What about you? Um, I would have to say it's probably like... Kazam? Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> Curly Sue? <laughs> The Uncle mask. Buck. Uncle, Uncle Buck. Buck. I fucking love Uncle Buck. Um, no, I was probably like, um, um, you know, Steel Magnolias or something like that. And that, that's the. I've never that, seen it. It's a really feel good. It's a fabulous film. It's so fucking gay. I've seen the one with Queen Latifah. Oh my god. Oh no, no, yeah, we'd pretend that didn't exist. Even, he, even, even, yeah. Even, even black my fo- black friends are like, yeah, "Why did you watch that one, Mama?" That and was, I was like, "Because I'm just trying to be like, trying, watch the coolest to be newest woke. one." No, it's woke, Mama. No, 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 no. It's garbage. Um, it was not the coolest newest one. It was fine. I wasn't. But the, it didn't make me cry. I but, wasn't you know, like moved. It's the the original is so. It's just so gay. It's such gay canon. Like you know, it's like terms of endearment. It's like um, um, whatever you know. But why is it called Steel Magnolias? Well, because um, the the women are made out of steel. So they're, they're beautiful like, and like yeah. But there's a point at the end where they say, um, uh. When a character dies and, and, uh, is it Sandy or whatever? Shelby. Shelby. Yeah. And then the guy, like the, she's dying in the hospital and the husband and the father can't take it. And they, she's like, I thought men were supposed to be made of steel or something. They were. 
it's it's very like it's but it's all you know it's overwrought it's melodramatic um oh i love a good nasty ugly cry like i almost puke mm -hmm. like i re like a like eyes bulging so many tears and then the, the snot is so much that i almost like choke i love that when david cries i cry Really? Well, crying is very contagious. Yeah. We were talking about something the other day and he was crying and I was like instant crying. Yeah. I mean, when you watch somebody you care about cry. Yeah. Oh, but it's Woo! a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh my God. When my grandpa died, I remember we walked out to his deer stand, which is like, you know, in hunting, you have like your deer stand. Of course. And we all walked out there as a group after the funeral with my grandma. It was like, you know, it was a year later. It was an anniversary. A year later, we all go. And I never see my grandma cry. Something okay. really crazy about seeing your mom or your grandma, or your dad or something Absolutely, crying. Parents yeah. crying is so fucking crazy. Yeah. And my grandma, who I've never seen cry in my life, not even at my grandpa's funeral. Really? Not even at the funeral. Pours a shot and we all have shots, right? And like, you know, mm. and we're out at the deer stand. This is so, <laughs> so. Okay, smoky. Yes. We're all standing at a deer stand with a shot. Yeah, yeah. And my grandma, I remember she was like, she, she, she said, Ed. And then she started crying. And I remember seeing my grandma cry and being like, I will never recover from this Fuck. there's the saddest shit i've ever seen in my life yeah i've never like, seen my father cry never ever once he always cries around me <laughs> yeah after, after your he dad is in incredible his... shape yeah yeah he looks just three, like you three hips three hips three hip surgeries i mean yeah and he a knee your brother too yeah your family's all high and tight we're a fit yeah it's kind of a fitness family kind of fitness family my family's a little bit the opposite yeah <laughs> the fat, the fat, yeah fatty. a lack of fitness family <laughs> yeah. um i got oh, yeah. i got stage coach in two weeks now tell me what is is this like coachella but for country music it's coachella for folk music yeah a folk music i'm gonna okay. be honest i'm a little nervous about i'm a little nervous about getting not picket i don't care if people pick at me i'm a little nervous about getting but you're gonna be shot a, you're not gonna get shot mary but and if you do mary then what a way to go yeah. Not to be morbid, but seriously, it's better than falling down the stairs in the laundromat. I'm the last person of the evening on the latest performance. At what time? 11.30. Well, thank it, God. It'll be cool. The heat. Hello. Thank you. Indio, I think they California. offered me 11.30 or like 4 p.m. And I said, Mama, we're not, we're not doing, doing that. We're not doing pre-dusk. No, honey. We're not doing pre-dusk. And, you know, I don't want to complain, but. Do, do it. <laughs> the pay is fine. Once you put in everyone's rehearsals, transportation. You're breaking even. We're hoping. Yeah. So I'm just trying to have a good time. I rented a tour bus for me and the band to drive from LA to the gig. Oh, that's fun. And pull up behind. That way in drag, I have a little dressing room like yes, that's behind smart. the stage. That's smart. A little bit of splurge was like seven, $8,000 for the tour bus for the day. Yes. Oh my, you're not going to take a, you're going to take a nickel home. Well, luckily the next day at Stagecoach, I took a gig doing some correspondence boots on the ground for someone else, for something else. And also this is a big experience. Like of course, for your Stagecoach is so yeah. cool. And it's only 40 minutes, so I'm not nervous or anything. It's mm -hmm. like. That's like eight songs and some talking, you know, got it in, out in, in back Indio, California. Is it the same place or no? Some place different. It's a, I think it's at the same place, just place as Coachella is Coachella right now. Coachella is this weekend and the next weekend. Yeah. So this weekend's going to be great because all those weird people will be out of LA. Yeah. Melissa Etheridge is the same night as me and I'm going to try. You got to go come to her window, honey. I got to go watch Melissa. Yeah, you do. I love her so much. Maybe you just get everybody to migrate. You know, if she have, it is also weird because I've been doing like the EDM thing, DJing. Uh huh. And so it's weird to be like on this DJ tour and be like, all right, I go play my folk music festival in two weeks. <laughs> you I know, know it's mean? strange, but listen, you 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 um you do a lot of I mean the auto harp. I know I got it's a very different. I want to play it there, but it, it it is such an endeavor because it's such a fragile instrument. It's like thirty eight strings. I feel like that's like a that's a three hundred seater. But if I'm instrument. not gonna play it, well, you play it. it it's hooked up to a mic. You can hear it. I'm not going to play it at Stagecoach. When am I going to play it? Because I played on video games. Okay. Uh, you know, your little um, uh, cabaret residency off of uh, La Cienega? Totally. Thursday, Friday, Saturdays? Yeah. I'm doing at the butter shop. Yeah. <laughs> Eight and ten. Yeah. Uh, salt and straw. Two, <laughs> Can we talk about salt and straw? Um, uh, Dracula do you like, flavors. Do you like your blue cheese, olive, uh, Did your blue you cheese olive and sour cream? Parm gar garlic parmesan with meat sauce ice cream? How about oh. some lacquered wallpaper? Sob paint <laughs> chips. Exactly. I'm like, do you just have something normal? And they're like, we have vanilla. And I go, really? And they go, there's toenails on it. Yeah, like, it, it's um, we have a great chocolate busted tail light. Yeah, it's like what? I know. So this is a raspberry um ripple made from um penguin blood. 
Yeah, literally. It, you're it's like, like what? Um, we dipped. I dipped my own tampon in this one for you. Yeah, it's crazy. Mary, do, I remember, do what they're doing down at Ben and Jerry. Do what they're doing down at Cold Stone Creamery. Cold Stone Creamery. Birthday cake remix. Hagen Dazs. <gasps> Hagen Dazs. Yes. Yeah. David's been um, buying these frozen ice cream Snicker bars. How about them fat boys? You ever get into them fucking fat boys? Fat boy. I get into fat boys, but not what you're saying. These ice cream sandwiches are, are they're, they're flipping the script on the whole game. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about these fat boys, but I'm gobbling them up and they're so delicious. And I think on that note, on that note, hey, have a fat boy. Have a fat boy. Have a great time and be gay. Bye. Bye.